By the way, anybody needing a rooster? <laughs> yeah, that just seemed funny to even say. Look, if you live anywhere near Asheville, North Carolina, and you want a Bill Felder rooster, I got one, maybe two that I need to get rid of. So if you want to meet me somewhere in Asheville, um, you know, I'll pack him up and I'll take him your way if you want to meet and get this rooster. Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. Look at all these little cuties in here. Don't they make y'all squishy inside? Look how cute they are. All right, so we weren't planning on doing any birds through the uh, summer, but we are. And the reason why is because we had that lousy soil a while back, okay? And we need more compost. We've taken the 18 day compost that we made before and we've used it in some of those areas and we're already seeing improvement right out of the gates. So that's a good sign, but we need more of it. There ain't no more of this buying this bag stuff no more, even in a pinch. So that means I need these guys to go make me compost. So we're gonna be doing a bunch of things all at the same time here. Not only are we gonna be fattening these birds up to ultimately put into these freezers over here, but they, at the very same time, are going to be making us about one and a half to maybe two cubic yards a finished compost a week when they're off and running. Now they're not even a week old and these guys are growing like pterodactyls. Here in about another week, I'll probably put them outside. The weather's just fine for that. They'll just have a small footprint. Now before we go outside and look into that, I want to remind you, we got that swale class, July 30th and 31st, Camden, Tennessee. Be there or be square, you're gonna learn a lot. Also, one of our viewers, look y'all, this is the cat's meow. My man, Sheldon. He doesn't live very far from him, from us. This is Williams, he made this for William. This is the one he made for me. And these are fantastic. I've been wanting some custom boning knives and my man just came through. If anybody would like one, just reach out to me. He doesn't have a very big internet presence, but he said, if anybody's interested, uh, hit me up and then I'll get you in contact with Sheldon and maybe he can make a custom number for you. If not, there's also the option, that little shaking of the camera you just saw was William sneezing, okay? So um, if you want one, just reach out to me, Billy at permapasturesfarm.com, and I can hook you up with him. Man, he showed us a, a, a video of the things he has, and it's fantastic. All right, so, and also folks, don't forget, we got that Permaculture Pimp Cast out there, the hottest podcast out there. Trust me, it's gonna be. So before we're gonna, basically take the party from where we are and I'm gonna take you outside and show you what these birds are about to do for us. All right. So when you're gonna do this on your property, you wanna think about the best place. Just don't indiscriminately put your chicken tractor, if it's mobile, just anywhere because you're like, okay, I like this spot. Think about it in terms of zones and think about it tactic tactically and technically. Here's what I'm getting at. Okay, right here, if you're able to look right over here, I got the high tunnel. That's where the problem is, right? That's where we got that infected soil in there. So in terms of zones, I wanna be thinking about where can I situate those birds because I need that compost in close proximity. I don't have a tractor and a lot of you don't either. So I gotta situate this thing in close proximity to where I can easily put it in a wheelbarrow, get it where it's relevant, okay? Now, the way I'm figuring it, I probably need maybe two cubic yards of compost to solve what we need in there. Maybe, let's say at the worst case, case scenario, four. Well, the last time we did this, we produced 21 cubic yards in during the time we raised them. So that's pretty impressive. And we did that through the winter. Okay, so where can I use it? Go back to your zones. I got bees over here. You can see those boxes. I need to get those weeds from around them. Um, over here, you see the high tunnel. Of course, I just talked about that. Over here, we got some pioneer species. Look, we didn't wipe them all out yet, but they're coming, you know, they got their thing going. Over here, we got fruit trees. You see all that? This is a black locust fruit tree. That's an apple. Um, that's a rootstock over there. But then also, we got the centropic thing going on in here. You see those tomatoes down there? Bam, that's what I'm talking about. So over here, we got the same thing going in varying degrees of success, but everything on this side of the driveway has largely been 
um, just planted just this last fall or actually a lot of it was done even in the early spring so we got fruit trees growing we got comfrey growing we got uh, rosemary we got everything you could think of thyme oregano every bit of it is around every tree but this part is in transition now what does that mean in terms of the chicken tractor okay I got way more I got to run these guys out for probably I don't know about these birds but generally I never let my meat birds go longer than 16 weeks because it's at that point you can almost set your watch to it your roosters are gonna start to ripping so I got to get them out of there got to get them into the freezer unless I'm gonna keep some back but with everything I just described and right over there with that high tunnel being there I need this stuff in a sorry about the abrupt uh, cut there because I was gonna do all, all of this in one take but the bees started to ripping because it's this time of year even though we do all things permaculture and we have things for them to eat this is just one of those times they're a little bit aggravated I think because there's not as much as they're typically accustomed to every animal out here is spoiled y'all so we're gonna take a little trip over here and we're gonna show you so right here we talked about zones in the podcast the other day okay so you can look at this as zone two you got to drive up here and the beauty about it, when you situate your place, you want to think about these things. All I got to do is get out of the truck, walk over here, and check this out. If I wanted, they're not ready yet, but I can go ahead and get this Asian pear that's coming up there. I can go ahead and get whatever fruit is going up there. I shouldn't even let that go because we literally just put that thing in, and it was about chest high. Now look at it. So things are doing what they what they ought to be doing. Comfrey, you can see where we chop, chop and, uh, chopped and dropped it down there. Uh, some of the tomatoes are doing fantastic, some of them not so well. But I want to go ahead and hit into another thing while we're here because all that compost is going to be situated literally five steps away from where I'm standing right now. If I have to put it in a wheelbarrow, take it over here, and let's say put it on this more mature, this is actually two years old on this side over here, it is literally, what, eight steps before I go from there to dress the trees I have over here? I mean, look at this, y'all. This is only two years old. Look at that black locust up there. Look at that peach. Another black locust. We got an apple in between them. I mean, things are blowing up, and we, we just put that in not long ago. But, and none of it has been affected. Okay, so the beauty about all of this, think about your zones, especially if you ain't got a tractor. Think about how you could take that stuff, put it in very close proximity of where you're going to need it. And right here is primarily where we're going to need it. Okay, check this out. <laughs> Here's what's laughable. Now, deer love to work over apples, okay? It's known. Here it is. This is on the outside of my property. I hit every square inch of this thing with bone sauce when it arrived because it didn't have any leaves on it, okay? Look, not a single, look, there's fresh growth right here. Deer would wipe that out, okay? This is on the outside of what's protected by my fence all the way around. Over here, the same exact thing. I got trees planted. I had so many extra trees. That's a story unto itself, but I had so many extra trees. I had to give them away. And I also had to plant them on the outside. So this is part of that. This is also part of that zone where, you know what, any passerby, maybe on a bicycle, maybe some of the people walk up and down this road. Um, we'll go over here, take a closer look. You'll see there ain't no damage. All right, look here, apple tree completely unaffected there's my fence right there and when you look at where the deer 
when we have seen them, they would basically take this path and they would go up that ridge over there, okay? There's another fruit tree, fruit tree. Not one of them out there is touched. So those clowns literally walk past all these fruit trees on the outside just to get to the one, two, there was three of them that they hit that didn't have any bone sauce on it. All right, so check it out. You see this footprint right here? This is essentially what the footprint is going to be like for those meat birds, okay? Except there's just gonna be a lot more of them in here. I got these Bielfelders in here right now and they're gonna be used to work into the laying flock, okay? So gotta make that integration, which you'll see here in the future. By the way, anybody needing a rooster? <laughs> yeah, that just seemed funny to even say. Look, if you live anywhere near Asheville, North Carolina, and you want a Bill Felder rooster, I got one, maybe two that I need to get rid of. So if you want to meet me somewhere in Asheville, um, you know, I'll pack him up and I'll take him your way if you want to meet and get this rooster. That being said, talking about the chicken tractor on steroids. Now, I can let that go indefinitely, okay? I can leave a detachment of birds back in there and just harvest what I need and then keep populating it with the birds I want to you know, put in the freezer in the future. But essentially, the track it's going to take, if you look up here, it's basically where you see these guys right now. It's just that grove of trees, they're going to be on just this side of those trees you see up there, okay? And every bit of compost they make after I get what I need for that high tunnel is going to go around all the trees. How cool is that? I mean, so if you have an issue um, where you've gotten some of that jacked up soil, I don't even know if this method is going to work for sure in the high tunnel, but it's gonna be the first way I go before I take any more serious options. All right, so how cool is that, y'all? We're basically, I mean, all this, the food forest is blowing up, orchards blowing up, as long as I keep bone sauce on things. And these guys are going to get a new home. Hopefully one of you people will reach out to me. Once again, Billy at permapasturesfarm.com. Um, the name of these birds, one of them's called, um, I, can't, I, I came up with some crazy names, but obviously you can name them yourself. But the one I'm keeping is going to be Comfrey Bogart. Yeah, I know, pretty clever, huh? Anyway, y'all need anything from us. Go to the website, we got it. Anything down below, chicken processing, we got that. There's an awesome video down there from Jason from Sow the Land. Um, anything you need in terms of an EMP shield, freeze dryer, you name it, it's all down below. Go check out the website if you need Comfrey, bone sauce, Comfrey salve, we got that. Here before too long, we're gonna have more of those rice knives out there. So remember, check us out on the Permaculture Pimp Cast. Also check out that hollow roast coffee we got down below. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm. We'll see you next time.